It's been 36 hours since uh, my surgery for parathyroid adenoma removal, and they found three adenomas in there, little tumors that are benign. But what's so interesting about that is that I wasn't sure I even had a one, because here's why. In Colorado, they had done an ultrasound scan on me, actually two over the course of a year, and they said I had two thyroid cysts on my thyroid gland and no parathyroid adenomas were seen on those ultrasounds in Colorado. So as it, that was just really bizarre to me because I wrote the book on thyroid and I have supplements for thyroid and I've been thyroid healthy for, I don't know, 15 years. So I was a little confused. There was a lot of mental chatter about that. But as it turns out, my doctor said my thyroid's perfect and I had no thyroid cysts on there that actually, the what was seen on that ultrasound was actually the parathyroid adenomas and there were more than two, there were actually three, which he removed uh, 36 hours ago. So I'm um, real excited about the future. It should mean more energy and better health and uh, I'll share more with you as as I move forward through this experience, but um, you can see, I can talk. Um, <clears throat> I'm feeling okay. I have to put ice packs on here to keep the swelling down, but th that's where they went in. And there won't be a scar. They tell me that in about a month or two that it will be completely gone because the stitches are on the inside. So they do a very special um, method of surgery at the parathyroid center. And I think it's the Norman Center in Tampa. Um, and I'll update you more as we move along. So it's been two days now since I had my parathyroid tumors taken out and actually 51 hours exactly. And um, I'm feeling better this morning. I was able to wash my hair and make the bed and I'm feeling much, much better. It's amazing what a little ibuprofen and a good night's sleep can do. So uh, this is the scar. I can take the bandage off in seven days. It does hurt, my neck hurts. Um, it doesn't hurt to swallow really. It just, you can feel the pain from the incision. And uh, this morning I sneezed, <laughs> big mistake. <laughs> I was chilly when I got out of the shower. So I've heated myself a hot pack to keep myself from getting a chill because sneezing is uncomfortable. Um, I was able to write a blog. Um, I've been writing blogs for like 30 years and I haven't missed a week yet in terms of researching, but it was a pretty easy one. Just, I didn't have to research too much. It just sort of fell out of my brain, but I'm doing pretty good. Um, I have to take calcium. So I take six of these a day. If I was to take the Citricol Max, which is what they recommended, I would be only taking like I don't know, four or five, but those are horse pills. And these, these are a little better, but they're sticky. They're kind of horrible. Um, I'm gonna need to formulate something better for people with osteoporosis or people with um, post-parathyroid tumor removal because you have to stay on calcium for years, if not life. Um, picture coming soon, if that grosses you out, turn this off now, but, um, this is what they took out of my neck. I had four parathyroid glands. I only have one now because they took three out, two from my left side and one from my right. And this isn't actually a gland. Um, that's actually the tumor. The gland you might be able to see is right down there on one of them. It's the size of a grain of rice. And so you can see what was under there. You know, I only had one symptom, maybe two, like I was just chronically fatigued, which I attributed to just working too much or I don't know, maybe tick bites. I've <laughs> sort of been eaten alive in my lifetime. I've probably had three or four tick bites, but I've had one symptom and it was just fatigue. And then I did have some difficulty swallowing after I ate over the last year. Um, I would feel what felt like a little spasm or something. So that, that was probably related to this in my neck. So I'm looking forward to more pleasant meals. I hope this video is helpful. I'll make another one soon and tell you some stories that I think of to help you too on your journey in case you find yourself in my position. 
It's day 12 since my parathyroid adenoma re removal, and I had that done at the Norman Parathyroid Center with Dr. Andrew Rhodes. He is amazing. He's like my hero, and um, that place is great. I will put the link uh, down below for you, but I just wanted to give you an update on how I'm doing. I'm doing so much better. Um, the symptoms that I were was having were just trouble swallowing, like gastric reflux, and chronic fatigue, which I had had for a long time. But there are other symptoms that other people experience and you should know about them. Sometimes people develop insomnia or depression, um, irritability, brain fog, memory problems, um, and 10 others, which I, I have an article I've written about that for you. So you can see if you qualify. But basically the big deal is if your PTH levels are high or your calcium levels are high, then you have a problem with your parathyroid and usually it's an adenoma. Um, anyway, I am healing up really well. Again, day 12, I've already been to Zumba twice. Did okay the first time, but I went on day eight. Um, I went this morning and I did so much better and showered, cleaned up to make you this video. Um, in case you want to see my scar, I'll show you. It's healing really good. I've been putting drench on it, which contains a natural antihistamine in it and alternating the drench cream with the vitamin E oil and just applying that externally. And I would say that for the most part, there's no more pain. Um, just maybe a little weird pressure sensation a little when I, you know, put my head back, which you have to do in certain moves, you know, when you're doing Zumba. Um, so I'm just careful about that. And I'm just wearing scarves. I discovered that I have a scarf snip. I love them. So I bought three in the last two weeks. Anyway, um, I hope this helps you on your own journey and I'll check in with you again real soon. As you know, I like to help as many people as possible. So you've been following my journey with hyperparathyroidism and this is the final video that I'm making for you today. And I took a lot of notes because I don't wanna miss anything. So I may check my computer here periodically, but it is December, 2022, and it has been just over three months after surgery and they removed three parathyroid tumors from my neck. And in case you don't know, the parathyroid glands are part of the endocrine system and they sit behind the thyroid glands. And a lot of people think it's the same thing, but parathyroid has nothing to do with thyroid other than the same words in, in them. Um, and that's only because of where they're positioned anatomically in the body. About one in 50 women over the age of 50 will develop a parathyroid tumor. They're also called adenomas. They're usually benign, they're almost always benign. And again, I had three removed. So if you've been following my journey, you already know that this can be a very destructive disease because it causes the parathyroid glands to secrete more parathyroid hormone, which is abbreviated as PTH. And what that does is basically it raises your blood levels of calcium. Now. You want your calcium in your bones, not in your blood. So that's why it's so destructive because when the calcium is high in the bloodstream, it's doing all kinds of things. Remember, calcium is sort of in charge of the electrical system of the body. So when you think of it that way, you understand that it can cause cardiac arrhythmias. Um, you just don't want the electrical or wiring system in the body jacked with, and that's what happens when you have hypercalcemia for years, which apparently I did, and I didn't know about that until this year. And when I found out, I went to the parathyroid uh, center in Tampa and I had those adenomas removed. Now, it is unusual to have three removed. Um, probably less than 2% of people will have three tumors. And so that was the case with me. I guess I waited too long. Anyway, um, let me check my notes here. Oh, calcium, right because calcium is high in the bloodstream where it should be higher in the bones. So as you can surmise, osteoporosis may be a problem as well. Um, also kidney stones, which I didn't have those fortunately, but I had the number one symptom of hyperparathyroidism and that is fatigue. And I've had fatigue for quite some time. And I knew that because going to the gym would make me breathless or going up and down the stairs would, <laughs> was really hard. And so I'm telling you all of this and sharing these personal details of my journey because I think it can help you because I feel like a simple test will help you diagnose this. Testing for hyperparathyroidism is super easy. All you need to do is test for your 
blood levels of calcium. You can do a serum calcium and an ionized calcium. I would do both. Also vitamin D and your PTH hormone. So PTH levels can be tested in the blood. Now, if those are abnormal, then I would recommend a Sestamibi scan, which is a specialized test. I don't love so much the ultrasounds that they do on your neck because they'll tell you incorrectly that you might have a thyroid cyst, which is not the same as a parathyroid tumor. And so you can be very easily misdiagnosed if you end up doing an ultrasound. The Sestamibi scan is the way to go. Um, one important thing, about 96% of people with hyperparathyroidism will have low vitamin D levels. So that could be your one and only clue. And if your doctor tells you that your low vitamin D levels is causing your hypercalcemia or high calcium, that's impossible. Find another doctor or research on your own. And I recommend the parathyroid.com for the best information on the internet. And I think they have the most current information. But again, in summary, I'm feeling great. I'm back at the gym because with fatigue being the number one symptom of this problem, I no longer have that. And so I'm able to go to the gym and go to Zumba and lift weights again. So I'm losing weight. Um, probably helps that I'm also on a keto diet, which is pretty clean and low carb. But I am feeling virtually normal again, just after three months. And it's been a long journey these past few years because I didn't know what was causing my chronic fatigue. I thought it was Lyme disease because I've been bitten by ticks for, I don't know, as a kid, probably four times. But I don't have any other symptoms. I don't have any symptoms of Lyme. So that never sat well with me. But now I understand I have these parathyroid adenomas in my neck. And now that they're gone, I'm feeling great again. And I hope that me sharing these details will help you too. Um, in summary, if you're tired and there's no real reason for that, or if your vitamin D levels are low, or if your calcium levels are high, I urge you to research at parathyroid.com and do a simple blood test and make sure that your PTH levels are within normal range. Okay, I hope this helps you and I wish you the best. Take care now. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Susie Cohen. I'm a real life pharmacist, so I know a lot about medications and metabolic pathways. I've been writing medical articles for 30 years. You may have seen me in your local newspaper or some popular morning shows. If you're interested on my advice regarding a specific health topic, I invite you to use the search box at my website, suzycohen.com. I've used my knowledge of pharmaceuticals and herbs to formulate custom dietary supplements and skincare formulas that actually work. Please check the description below for links to my blog and my vitamin shop. Also, hit that subscribe button if you'd like to watch more content like this. Don't forget to ring the notification bell too.